<laughs> Hi and welcome to my kitchen. So I wanted to talk about food safety today, particularly how to handle raw food because it seems to be a really hot topic. And I'm going to be a little scattered today, I'm sorry. Iberia's stomach has not been feeling well. She was up all night, I was up all night with her. So forgive me for that and let's get into it. So the first thing, um, people always wonder what they should use when they're preparing food. And so that's why I wanted to show you exactly what I do because I don't think that it's any different than what you would do when you're cooking for yourself. So obviously I'm in my kitchen, obviously I'm wearing normal clothes, Clearly don't wear you know, a pretty white dress when you're handling raw meat, but um, super normal things. This is my defrost drawer. So voila, here is my meat. That's terrible, here's my meat. That's, that's, don't think bad, that's bad, bad thinking. Okay, so I have my three animals. I'm actually going to start with Iberia's. Um, so I'm going to put everything else back in here and um, I'll see you in a bit. Now, the question that many people ask is, should I be wearing gloves? And as you can see, like I'm obviously not wearing them. That really depends on you. Obviously, if you are immunocompromised, you have you know, an autoimmune disease or your immune system is low for some reason, so you may be more susceptible to getting sick, then that might be something that you wanna consider. Honestly, I would never wear gloves when I'm preparing meat for humans, so then I don't wear gloves when I prepare meat for animals. Now, obviously, I kind of pull up my sleeves and I actually head over to the sink, and then as soon as I have basically washed my hands with a little bit of water, sometimes soap, depending, and then I just use my dirty rag to dry my hands. Now that we've handled that, we need to talk about bacteria on your meat. Here's the thing, if your meat is good quality, it's not going to have bacteria on it, or it's not gonna have a lot of bacteria. And the majority of the bacteria that it's going to proliferate if you leave your meat in the fridge or outside to defrost too long and it's going to make it smell are actually non-pathogenic bacteria. And all of the information, obviously, I have links below that you can go and check it out for yourself. So quality of the meat is your top priority. Now, one of the things that people worry about is basically what happens afterwards. So what do animals do? You know, do they drag the food all over the house? Are they playing with toys and then, you know, contaminating things? So I wanted to show you what I came up with. So I actually struggle with this myself because I used to feed chicken before I knew that they were allergic. And I really didn't want them to be dragging, especially the cats dragging raw chicken all over the house. I was just not down with that. And I'm still not down with that, even though I'm very relaxed with my cleanup routine. But I crate train them. So I crate train my cats and I crate train my dog. I'm going to show you I'm going to get you off of the tripod and let me show you. Look at that sad face. I'm sorry, but you were not well, but you will have dinner and it's fresh. So here is my feeding station. I'm going to, this is my litter box. It's a little bit too close to the feeding station, but we just moved. And I'm actually going to, as you can see over there, I have a custom uh, litter box that I am working on that I will show you in another video, but this is our feeding station. My kitties go in and we don't have to worry about any issues with dragging food around or getting raw food all over the house. And that kind of comes in handy. As you're going through all of this, don't forget that cats and dog saliva has antibacterial properties, particularly against the bacteria that they would normally see on wounds, which is why they lick themselves. So if you are worried about your dog or cat then playing with their toys or playing with their mouth or licking someone, they are most likely not going to transfer major bacteria from the meat to whoever they're licking. If you're worried about it, then you can definitely go ahead and clean your dog toys or maybe clean their beard if they are kind of a bearded dog after they eat. And I'm comfortable enough with that to consider it good. But obviously, do what feels best for you and your household. And we're done. We're done. So as you can see from some of these shots, um, obviously everything is a little bit dirty. It's not as crazy as it could be, but you know, there is meat around. So I'm going to show you how I clean up. And as I show you, I'm also going to show you why hydrogen, hydro, why hydrogen peroxide is a really good option when you are considering what to use to say disinfect. So if you don't want to use bleach, it's a very good option and why it's also a good option when you are cleaning uh, rugs. So. 
let me show you. So the biggest things that I use are these. This is basically just bleach. It's a 10% solution of bleach in a fancy Ikea spray bottle. <laughs> and I prepare it because I have a very sensitive nose and I really struggle when everything smells like meat. So I actually clean everything up with 10% bleach solution because it kind of kills the smell in my nose even after I'm done cleaning. But this is absolutely not necessary. Now bleach is environmentally friendly, even though it's not the most environmentally friendly when you look at how it's produced, but it's still a very good option. Now, if you want to go with something a little bit cleaner on the environment, um, you can actually use this sucker. So this clearly written in German, but it is hydrogen peroxide. And I just basically buy, as you can see, the biggest bottle they have um, stick in the top from the Ikea bottle. I really like it because it works really well with blood. And I also keep it handy in the house because if you have a throw up or um, spill situation, this is wonderful. Um, it's very mild on fiber, so I use it on my rugs. I can actually clean up really quickly without any staining. So lifesaver. You can use some dish soap. So mine is in this beautiful bottle that I just bought again at Ikea, hello, say hello to my new friend. Just dish soap, because you actually don't need to use the other two. You can just go with dish soap if you want to, but as I said, um, I prefer it because of the smell. Mm. Then I will use this one. This is basically the one we use to clean counters. I don't know about you, but like, I always just had one for dishes and counter, but apparently in Germany, you have to have things that are separate. So if you're the same, you let me know. And then I also use one of these that, because it's white, when I'm done at the end of today, I'm just gonna throw it in the wash um, with hot water and a little bit of bleach and I don't have to worry about contamination or anything, okay? Et voila, my kitchen is clean, sanitized and ready to prepare food for humans, which tonight includes, not sponsored, but definitely not meat. Um, so yeah, as you can see, you can kind of prepare whatever you want afterwards. It's been a pleasure. Give your cat and your dog a kiss from us. If you are interested in crate training your cat, then I'm going to link the video over here of how we crate trained our kitties in a very easy and stress-free way. We'll see you in the next one.